Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I am here with my 2011 ML300 W164 ML class chassis and we are going to be replacing the Airmatic suspension air compressor with this new one from Max Beating Rods. So recently I was driving the vehicle and all of a sudden I had an Airmatic malfunction warning come up on the dashboard. So straight away, when I got home, I diagnosed the car using my scan toll, and what came up was a 5503. Recovery time during filling of central reservoir is too long. Now, when I did some research on that code, the most common problem is your airmatic suspension compressor has become weak and is failing. So straight away, I rang the dealership, and they quoted me $2,225.65 for a replacement compressor. And that wasn't even a brand new compressor. That was a refurbished compressor that I would be getting. They did say it came with a two year warranty, um, but alas, I wasn't prepared to spend that. So I've purchased a Max Beating Rods. I'll put a link in the description below. You can purchase one of these compressors from Max Beating Rods for these vehicles for just over $200. So that's what we're going to install today, folks. Let's get into it. So before we remove the compressor, we'll just take the fuse out of the fuse box the fuse box is located on the front right hand side of the vehicle. We'll take the airmatic compressor fuse out so that there's no risk of the car inflating. So it's this fuse right here that we're going to take out. There we go. So having that fuse removed will completely disable the airmatic system. So obviously out of convenience we're using the lift here today. You could attempt this job using a jack and jack stands. I would say if you're going to use jack stands though, put a jack stand under every single corner of the vehicle because when you remove the compressor, you may find that other air springs on the vehicle will deflate if there's a slight problem with your valve block as well as your compressor. So the first thing to do is to take that front right wheel off as the compressor is located in the right hand side fender well there. So the next thing we're going to do is to remove this inner lining of the fender well. So to remove the fender lining, you'll need a 10 millimeter spanner there and there, and then you'll need a screwdriver to remove the pins along here, and there's a few along the front as well. So as you can see, with that fender well removed, we can see the original compressor is right here. So that's the one that we've got to get out today and we'll replace with the new one. So to remove the compressor, we've got the three bolts, one, two, and then there's another one in underneath, three bolts. We've got the intake airline to remove. Straight away, I can see there's a big split in my intake airline. So we're gonna to have to deal with that but the compressor's probably been sucking a little bit of dirt. Uh, it's probably caused the failure in the compressor. And there's a uh, output airline on the other end of the compressor. You can see up there, plus we've got the two electrical connections up to the compressor. So let's get the air hose off next. Look at that split in the air intake hose there. So we're gonna have to deal with that. And what I'm thinking, rather than buying another hose, from the dealership, which I'm sure will be a couple hundred dollars just for an intake hose. We will cut the hose there and we will just turn it and feed it onto the compressor input with a slightly modified hose because the rest of the air intake hose looks good. So let's get on with getting the compressor out. We'll move on to the mounting bolts next. So now that we've got those mounting bolts removed, let's get that pressurized airline off and the electrical connections off. So on the removal of the electrical connections, I actually struggled a little bit with this connection here. We had to push back the white tab, um, but it was still a little bit tight in getting it off. Um, but yeah, you just need to make sure that when you're removing this one, you've got that tab at the back pushed all the way back. The other connection, which was slightly higher, simply had the uh, clip to uh, press in, like the traditional style. All right, so just having a close look at the two compressors, this is the one that's come off the car. We've got the new one here. We can see they're uh, identical. We've got the inlet 
for the air. We've got the air coming out. They've given us a new fitting, so we'll get that installed. Now we need to reuse the rubber mounts from the old compressor, so we'll just install the rubber mounts onto the new compressor, and then we will install the new compressor into the vehicle. We've got the old rubbers there onto the compressor, and we'll get the new compressor into the vehicle in the reverse procedure that we did previously. So we'll remove the old fitting, the air fitting that has the pressure. So you just get a screwdriver, you just give it a slight twist on that retaining collet, and the old fitting should slide off. There we go. So we've got the new fitting. It's come with this plastic insert just to hold everything in place prior to installation. So I'll just take note of the collet there. So it's the reverse procedure of removing the other one. Slide the fitting over the line and then we put the retaining collet on. There we go, that should be fine. All right, so when it comes to reinstalling the pump, the pump's going to go back in in this orientation. We're reusing the rubber mounts, as I explained before. Need to make sure we put those washers on top. And then the uh, springs will come in from underneath those dampening springs. Before we actually mount it up, we're going to reconnect the electrical connections. Now we make sure the one with the white clip that comes out goes on here and the other connection goes on the top one. So we'll get the connections on first, the electrical connections, then we'll get the compressor mounted up. All right, so as you can see, we've got the mounting bolts on. They're not done up yet. The next thing to do is to get the airline on and into position. So that screws right into there, into here. So we'll get that on now. Now that's actually plastic, so it's really important that we don't cross thread that. As you can see, I'm just putting it in finger tight to start with before I put the spanner onto it. Importantly, I've seen other people, they just seem to, some people seem to just press the plastic in. I've shown you today, the way I've done it is to actually take the collar off, make sure the collar is correctly installed. I think it's the correct way to do it. So if you want to do it my way, if you don't, up to you. So with that all the way in, we just now nick it up with the spanner, just moderately firm. So now that we've got all of the air output connections and electrical connections connected up, we'll just tighten up those mounting bolts now. So we just shorten the hose a fraction to deal with that split. This is the inlet hose. We'll just cut it off cleanly. And then we will, what we'll do is we'll thread the inlet hose up the other side there. And then around like that. And then it can go straight on. So we just need to take out that little bit of plastic there that's on the inlet that was protecting it. We've got the clamp. The old clamp, so we'll put the old clamp on the hose. Now just having a look up here, we can see that runs up to a, a inlet filter. Now I can see that's a MAN WK327. We probably should replace that as well. I don't have one on me. I can see it looks really dirty, but what I'll do is in a future video, I'll show you replacing that filter on the inlet as well, as I think that's a critical piece of maintenance. It's probably overlooked on a lot of these Mercedes because that's saving the inlet air that's going into your compressor down here. So to finish up the job, we'll just get the inner skin back on, we'll get the wheel back on, and we'll get the fuses in.
All right, so we've got all of the fasteners now on the inner skin. We've got the push pins in, and we've got the ones under the front here. Got them in, so it's just a matter of getting the front wheel back on now. All right, so we've just lowered the card down. Just lowered it down to normal ride height to start with. And the final thing to do is obviously to put that fuse back in for the airmatic suspension. So I'll just pop it back in like that. And we'll pop the fuse cover back on. All right, and then we'll jump in the car and start it up and check that the compressor comes on. All right, so we've just got the car running now and we'll just test the compressor by raising the car. So we'll just press the lift button and we can see the car's rising. This compressor sure is quiet. You can hardly hear it running. Listen to that. Listen how quiet that compressor is. So we'll just lower it down now. So we can see the car's lowering down now. And there you go. You can see the car has lowered down. So certainly that new pump is quiet and it's all looking good now. So now that I've replaced the compressor, I'm just going to delete the code that's come up from the scan tool. If you don't have a scan tool, that's okay. You won't see the malfunction on your dash. However, that code will still be resident in your car's ECU. And next time you take the car to a mechanic, they may comment and you should just tell them that you've replaced the compressor and ask them to politely erase the code. So there you go, folks. That's how to replace your faulty airmatic compressor in a ML class W164 chassis. As you saw here, we replaced the original OEM Mercedes pump with a max speeding rods pump at around the cost of $200, as opposed to what Mercedes wanted to charge for only a refurbished pump. They wanted to charge $2,225. And don't forget the 65 cents Mercedes. Um, that's what they wanted to charge. Plus labor, of course, so it could have been up to $3,000. Um, we've saved a lot of money here in the end. You've seen we've raised the car a couple of times, lowered it. The new pump is actually a lot quieter than the old pump. And then finally, we did a scan of the car. We showed that fault was still there. So we've cleared that fault and we'll take it for a road test now. So if you like this video, do feel free to like, share and subscribe. And until next time, have a good evening.